Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. My guest today is Mark Smith. Mark is an ex-train man who loved trains so much that he decided to start a website. It's one of the best resources I've ever come across. It's Man in 61 and I'd love to welcome you to the show, Mark. Hello. It's really great to have you here. I, I love trains myself, so I've got some questions for you that hopefully will inspire some women in our community to think about trains as opposed to planes. Absolutely. Fire away. Okay, cool. So a lot of women in our community are in the United States or Canada and, of course, in the UK, and they come over to Europe, um, maybe a cruise or you know some other reason. They end up in Rome or, or you know Copenhagen and then think, well, I've got a week. What can I do? Uh, and the train network in Europe is so extensive. I just would like you to tell me what, what you would say to them if they were saying, oh, I don't know, trains, you know, not really my style. What would you, how would you encourage someone to try trains? Well, trains and cruises, I mean, they were made to go together <laughs> because they are the two forms of travel that treat you as a human being, not a piece of freight. Absolutely. You can stand up and walk around. You can sleep in a bed in your own room in a sleeping car or a ca just as you can in a cabin. Yeah. You can eat in a, a restaurant on a train just as you can on a ship. So if you like cruising, the chances are you're like the relaxed, civilized experience of taking a European train. And if you know where to look, it can be really affordable. And of course, in Europe, the trains connect just about everywhere. Yeah, they do. Well, I live in Switzerland, so I don't even have a car anymore. I use my train for everything. And so I've become quite a, an aficionado of, is it the word, of, of trains. And I love them. And for the same reasons you've just described, they're human, they're, they're fun, they're, you know, you see what you're in the countryside. So tell us, um, first of all, your website, Man in Seat 61, but the, seat, the site is just called seat61.com. That's right. Nice yeah, and simple. Really simple. Um, it's really everything you need to know about planning a trip, looking for tickets, prices, and so on. Um, tell us, just from European perspective, what are European trains like? <laughs> well, they're all different. Yes. In fact, that's one of the nice things about trains. They reflect the culture of the country that operates them yeah. in a way that planes don't, because planes are all the same, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to generalize. And, of course, you've got long-distance ones and short-distance ones all different shapes and sizes, right. uh, and that's one of the nice things about it. So, uh, for example, if you um, were going to get on a German train, for example, because I think the German network um, is, is quite extensive, I mean, what can someone expect? I mean, you've got first class, second class, I mean, you've got restaurant cars. I mean, what, what can you expect the experience to be on a, on a European train? Well, that's a German all, train. Yeah. German first of all, you have to sort of unlearn all the complexity of air travel, because typically with a European train, we don't have check-ins. They don't leave from airports miles outside. You can just wander in off the street in the city centre into the station concourse, look at the indicator board. And if you've got a ticket, just walk up to the train and hop on any time before departure. So straight away, it's winning. It's leaving from the city centre. There's no check-in. You can just walk up, hop on, and you're on your way. So it's, it's much more laid back and relaxed uh, compared to flying. Um, now, of course, on a, tip, on a German train, if we're talking about that, we've got first and second class. And generally speaking, it's what you'd expect. A little bit more leg room and elbow room in first class, but... Um, Second class is absolutely fine. We've got very few uh, peasants and chickens on our trains here in Europe uh, at the moment. So there's no need to pay for first class unless you really can afford it and, and want to treat yourself. And German trains are nice because the long distance ones tend to have a proper sit down restaurant car. And to be honest, nothing beats having proper food served on proper crockery, crockery you know, no plastic knives and forks no, here, in a proper dining car. That's one of the nicest experiences traveling along through the scenery. You know, it's really funny. I've checked out your website, of course, and um, there's some great pictures that you put there of the food that you're being served. And it's just, you know, it's so evocative. And I would I recommend people to check out Mark's site for that reason, that it's the experience is not just about you know, train schedules and prices, but it's about the experience 
of train travel. So it's really a great site. That's right. Because I, th- I think you could probably sell airline tickets without explaining what a plane looks like because they all look the same and everyone knows what to expect. But I think with trains, they're all so different. And for a lot of travellers so unfamiliar, you do have to show show people exactly what it looks like. Yeah. And what I do is I tweak the site based on the questions I get asked. So, for example, from people travelling in America where baggage with planes is such a big problem they're always asking about baggage and of course here in Europe we don't worry about that we know that a train takes baggage we know we bring it with us just as you bring your coat and your you rubber it. and you <laughs> stick it on a rack yeah nobody weighs it nobody measures it it's it's free and easy so the train companies don't explain that because we think it's obvious and of course everyone coming over from overseas worries about it and I've I've, I've learned to, ex- to take a step back as a and perhaps explain things a bit more well, I mean, traveling in Europe really is a wonderful experience. I, I actually did some train travel this summer. We're using an interrail pass. Um, but tell me about the best way to go about buying your ticket. Um, should you buy it in advance or is it better, maybe more um, cost effective to just pick it up at the station? What's your... Well, this, this, is, this is where you do need to sort of think about it a bit. For short distances, trains in Europe work a bit like the New York subway. You turn up, You buy a ticket and you hop on the next train. And in in countries like Switzerland, Swiss trains work that way. Trains within Belgium and within the Netherlands work that way. But for long distances, and we're talking Paris to Amsterdam or Berlin to Prague, trains now have airline-style budget fares. And sometimes I think this is a closely guarded secret from overseas travellers who are often persuaded to buy an unnecessarily expensive rail pass when you can go online to the operator's own website and buy a ticket from Paris to Amsterdam for €35, which is, what, US dollars Prague to Budapest for €19, which is, what, US dollars Usually print them out on your own PC, and off you go. It can be amazingly cheap if you know where to go to. And that's the catch, because there isn't one single website that does all European trains. Uh, Just as every country has its own rail network, they've all got their own website, they all have their own terms and conditions, um, and it's, it's all about knowing which website to go to. And that's really what I set up Seat 61 to do, to tell people where to go to buy which journey. And you go into great detail as well. I mean, I, I was planning a trip in Eastern Europe and um, during the, the refugee situation where certain trains were being cancelled and your your site is very up to date. I mean, you actually also do t- uh, tweet on Twitter and um, you keep people informed. So I think, you know, you're a great reference for current event. Uh, for example, you just recently posted, I believe, that um, the train between Copenhagen and Stockholm is being uh, cancelled or delayed or cancelled after the new year. Uh, well, yes, who'd have thought that the war in Syria would ultimately affect yes. through trains between Copenhagen and Sweden? Yeah, um, that's true. Yes, it's, it's very difficult to keep up with the real-time information with what's happening, but um, I certainly give it a, a, a good try. Well, Europe is, I mean, I think is a great example. I mean, your, your, your website also covers um, other countries. I mean, it's, it's a worldwide site. So if you want to travel from Beijing to Shanghai or, uh, I don't know, Singapore to Ho Chi Minh City, you've got all that information too. But from a European perspective, do you think it's a good um, uh, thing to do for older travelers? Do you think European travel is really for the young kids or is it okay for us old folks as well? It's for anyone of any age. I started traveling when I was in my uh, late teens, early 20s, and I haven't really stopped since. And I think the relaxed nature of train travel, when you don't need to charge around, uh, when you get older, you want to take things a bit more easily, don't you? And uh, nothing better than a, a train. I think one thing people have to relearn is that a journey isn't just transportation to your next photo opportunity. It's actually part of your your holiday, your vacation, yes. Yes. and actually being on a train with with weary feet from your last uh, sightseeing uh, days, Adventure, it's quite yeah. nice to put them up, uh, take a break, get a good book out, get a nice glass of red wine, either bring it with you, because you can do that on trains, yes. they treat you like an adult, or get it from the cafe bar, and uh, just enjoy the scenery coming to you for a change. 
I love your passion, Mark. It's wonderful to to talk to someone with such a, an amazing excitement about trains and 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 I really like you said the human element that makes it so special. I think um, the glamour of flying has kind of gone now. It's not as um, much fun and um, you know, as it used to be as a, all the security and other you know add-ons to it. It's crazy, but it's a bit um, tarnished. That's, so, that's true. Yeah. So in terms of European travel, um, give us like three tips that you would give an old. Or, um, a person if they were oh I say older I mean someone in their 60s someone who um, you know just would like to know what to, how to think about a Euro- planning a European trip give us three three of Mark's tips okay well the first thing is there's a website called barn.de b-a-h-n dot d-e forward slash e-n and it's the German Railways online timetable and it doesn't just cover Germany it covers pretty much the whole of Europe. Okay, so great. the first place to, to start any question of how do I get from here to here by train, how long does it take, are there direct trains, do I have to change, what routes are there, start with that website, barn.de. Um, it'll pretty much give you train times from Lisbon to Helsinki or, or Moscow to Palermo. It's, it's a great system. Yeah. Uh, it'll give you fares and tickets for to from Germany, not elsewhere, but it will give you train times pretty much everywhere. everywhere. So that's okay. tip number one. Okay. The second tip is don't assume you need an expensive rail pass. Rail passes can be great if you want to be totally flexible and have unlimited travel, but for most people with a pre-planned itinerary, it's cheaper to buy advance purchase tickets. So the second tip is book in advance, only two or three months is plenty, direct with the relevant operator for that train or journey. It's usually the national rail operator for the country where the journey starts. That's the sort of general rule of thumb. But that way you'll get some really cheap advanced purchase tickets. And as I say, usually just print them out on your own printer. Nothing has to be sent to you. And uh, you won't pay, you usually don't pay any booking fees if you book direct for the operator. So where are we now? That's that's number two. Uh, And number three is look out for the scenic routes. (laughs) Sometimes oh, yeah. there's a slower scenic route, for example, from Amsterdam to the to Switzerland or southern Germany. You can take the high-speed line, which will save you an hour. But if you travel via Koblenz, you'll go down the Rhine Valley, past all those river boats, vineyards, castles, and the legendary Lorelei Rock. And it's worth that extra hour to take that tortuous, sinuous route down the Rhine Valley. <laughs> and of course, if you're going across Switzerland... Well, one of my favourite routes is the slow, narrow gauge route, the Benina route, yes. which will actually get you from Zurich to Milan the, the slow way, but you won't worry about that because the scenery up in the Alps is absolutely breathtaking. Well, I second that. I did the Bernina um, in the summer months, and it was still snow at the top of the mountains, but it was absolutely spectacular. I agree with you. And that's what I like about your site too, Mark, is that you actually do put um, train holidays together. The scenic routes are all listed. There's just lots of ideas if you don't know where to start. So I would say go to seat61.com first and then go to bond.de. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Mark. Those are great tips, and I hope it's encouraged women who are, uh, and men who are watching uh, to try Europe uh, by train. Thanks a lot, Mark.